And our next presentation is brought to us by our national silver sponsor, Genesis. It's titled Inspiring and Motivating Employees with Gamification. It's a case study from Deakin University. Please welcome Hayley Gray, Manager Customer Services, Deakin University, and Andy Hardy, Strategic Director, Employee Engagement at Genesis, to the microphone. And Andy, it's over to you. Maybe you do a few introductions of yourself and Hayley. Yes, cool. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for, for spending some time listening to, to Hayley and I talk a little bit about a little bit about employee engagement and a little bit about um, uh, about gamification and how that plays a part of, of engaging your workforce. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction, just talking a little bit broadly around what we're seeing in the market at the moment from an employee engagement perspective. Um, just a quick five minutes, and then we'll get over to to the uh, the main part of the conversation, which is actually talking to Haley, who's uh, who's a service delivery manager um, and looks after e solutions within Deakin. Um, and we're just going to talk through a little bit of a a little bit of a case study around how she's been using gamification in her world and, and how employee engagement's going in in uh, in uh, the education sector, especially within these these crazy times of, of COVID. So, a uh, little bit of an introduction. My my first slide, I guess, is definitely in a different moment in time to what we've been in the past. And you know, I, I've spoken at these events uh, previously as well, and we've talked a lot about employee engagement and the importance of it. Um, now more than ever it can't be any more important than it is right now you know and i think organizations have gone through probably the last six months or so of this kind of i guess transition to to a world we never thought we'd be in you know everyone needing to to work from home and have agents working from home and different people interconnecting in, in completely different ways to what we've done in the past and I wouldn't say that it was a frantic time, but it was definitely a, a busy time for companies to get that set up and get that in place. And I think we've almost transitioned to a next phase of that now. And we're at a stage where actually working from home is becoming the new normal. You know, that that that's in place now and people do have the ability to do that. And technology obviously lets them do that, which is wonderful. But I think companies are now, and you guys are listening to this as well, probably uh, link with this is, they're now looking at, they've got all these remote people and all this remote workforce. How do we connect with them? How do we make them feel part of our team still? You know, some organizations have, have been recruiting new people and they've never met anybody. It's all being done remotely. They've never actually been in an office. They've never physically had any contact other than over, over online meetings with WebExes and Zooms and things like that. So there's such a critical piece to this now around engaging the employee. And as we talk about things like, um, work-life balance and how we get that right now and, and employee well-being and mental health is so prominent in the news at the moment. We have such a huge responsibility around this as organisations to make sure our staff are well and safe and, and engaged with our business. And I just, if I just quickly uh, jump through just a couple of statistics that you might find interesting and there's been some studies carried out lately uh, around what does the new normal look like and what does home working look like and you know Gartner have come out and they, they did a they did a study with CFOs and 23% of the CFOs that they went out to, over 500 CFOs over major organisations, said 20% of their workforce will be working from home moving forward. And you progress that on and you say Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg has said 50% of employees will be home-based within five years. Twitter, anyone in, who works for Twitter now can telecommute forever. They don't have to go into the office anymore if they don't want to. Um, uh, interestingly, I ran a, a, an employee engagement webinar probably two months ago now, and I, I did a quick poll um, for Genesis customers, and I basically said, you know, how many of your customers do you think are going to be working from home moving forward? And, you know, 68% of the respondents, again, said 20% of the employees will be based, will be home-based. But really interesting stat, if you look at the, on the right-hand side, 21% of those people said at least 60% of their organization will be home-based moving forward. And I think what that shows is everyone knows this needs to happen and everyone needs to put these plans in place, but there's probably differences in organisations and maybe we haven't quite found that, that new point yet. Maybe we haven't found that exact point of what's right and it's probably going to be very different per organisation, per industry uh, and the likes as we move forward as well. Um, but if we just look at what, what does a typical contact centre look like? You know, we've got, historically, you've got a frontline set of agents and then you've got this operational execution layer which i guess is your is your team leaders it's your 
it's your human resources team, it's your learning and development group, it's maybe your business analysts, and, and you've got this layer of operational people, and then you've got this operational planning, and they're the people who typically use things like workforce management as an example, and they're the ones who are looking at planning and budgeting for the future and trying to work out what the headcount looks like and how many people we now need because we're working remotely and, and all of these different things. And then you've got the management layer that sits across the top. Uh, and that's kind of the, that's the, a typical model, if you like, and that's probably the same in your organizations as well. But what I think, what I think is different now is actually, and I'll maybe progress on, is actually these are all very combined. And the need when we're providing employee engagement out and we're actually engaging our teams is there's now more than ever, all of these different departments have to start working closer together. And, you know, every area will have a different need and different targets and, and challenges and what looks good to those. The quality management team, for example, will have uh, what looks good to them. And the workforce planning team will know that if they get the best schedules in place, then that's good to them. Um, and then you've got your coaching and development and making sure all the learning's delivered and, and it's delivered to the agents at the right time using this remote world that we're in. But actually, using capability and technology now, all of these different departments have to work closer together. It's not just the responsibility of um, the team leader to make sure their staff are, are well and happy and engaged and uh, their, their health and well-being is there. It's actually every single department. And by bringing all of these different departments together and using the same information and the same data and the same set of the, the single system and the single environment, it becomes really critical to actually trying to drive improvements in a business. A lot of these different departments have probably been doing these things for years. The quality management team, you've probably had quality management going on for such a long time. And coaching's obviously been happening in learning and development and human resources. But actually, the more that we can combine those things together and the more that we can work as one, we get a really clear picture of each individual and each employee. And I think that's a really critical step that companies are probably stepping into now and realizing that there's so many different touch points that we have about our employees that are scattered across our business. And the more we consolidate that, the better. Um, and what does that look like from Genesis's perspective, I guess? And, you know, Haley will talk a little bit more about this as well is, is actually Genesis have this suite of capability across employee engagement and uh, talk touching on all those different things I've just been talking around. And, and if, if I just break that in, into three sections, you'll see we've got these kind of three pillars, these three disciplines, if you like, um, one being resource management uh, and resource management is always obviously about are we recording every interaction? Are we looking at the screens and making sure the agents don't need any more support or help or they're struggling to navigate their platforms? We have quality management and voice of the employee and speech and text analytics. And then in the quality assurance, we're looking at performance management and learning and, and onboarding and then gamification, which we'll touch on today, which obviously had reward and recognition built into it. And then employee performance looks at recruitment and workforce planning and scheduling and mobility tools and those sorts of things as well. So there's actually a broad breadth of capability. And I, and I think Haley will touch on this today that actually this isn't just about one system fix, fixes everything. This is about a, a consolidation of approach and an approach, sorry, and the use of technology to be able to support that approach to help really engage the employees. So that's just a quick snapshot from me, a little bit of an intro from my side around what are we seeing in the market from Genesis's perspective and, and I guess what are we doing to help customers. Um, without further ado, we'll, we'll get to the, the most important person in this uh, in this 30-minute um, presentation and that's Haley. So Haley's, as I mentioned, a service delivery manager in eSolutions um, uh, and looks after that business area. Uh, Haley, I guess, first of all, it'd be great if you could just give a, a quick introduction and, and let us know a little bit about who you are and, and what does a service delivery manager in eSolution actually mean? Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Andy. Uh, so look, just very briefly, um, there's a few key aspects to my role. Um, obviously, I oversee the customer service team within the IT department at the organisation. Um, I also oversee key IT service management processes, for example, major incident um, and knowledge. Uh, we have a number of things in that space to look at proactive um, incident management and shift left initiatives. Uh, I have some awesome um, dev ops teams that innovate off the fly as they go to try and remediate issues and, and proactively engage our customer cohort once we identify something's going wrong and, and really target those customers impacted with the solution. 
Um, I'm also the business owner of the university-wide contact centre solution. So that being um, Genesis Cloud for us. And we've had that solution in place for approximately four years. Um, we rolled out employee engagement aspects of it about uh, 18 months ago, and I'll be talking a little bit about some of that today. Cool. Uh, if we talk about, if we if we look at COVID, and the, I know everyone's sick of hearing about COVID, I think, yeah, but if we look at how COVID's really hit organisations, most organisations have been pretty severely hit by it. I think the education industry has probably been hit by it equally as much, if not more than most companies and, and the changes that, that you guys have had to put in place so quickly. Um, how's, how's Deakin had to adapt to that, do you think? What have you had to do from a university perspective to be able to support all of your students that you have? Yeah, look, that, that's a really good question. Um, we have had a really rapid rate of change, absolutely, uh, across the whole organisation specifically to support our student cohort. But we've noticed not just the ways of working have changed, but also the nature of our work has changed quite dramatically. So we've really seen a shift towards, um, sorry, I'm just trying to change the slides quickly. Um, just the arrows on the left, you want me to progress it for you, Haley? Yeah. Can't seem to see the button. <laughs> this is not good. Uh, where are we? Slide number. How are you going? No, I can't seem to change it. Can um, I can't change it. I'm just going to talk to it. Okay. Hold it. Maybe Fiona or, or Jess can uh, can move it on in the background for us. Yeah, Jess, can you move it on to, to, the, to my slides if possible, please? Ah, awesome. Okay. Very good. Sorry. <laughs> um, alrighty. So you can see here we've really had a shift in, in the way we engage with our customers. We've moved from quite transactional uh, engagement to really more human connection where our customers you know, are wanting support, not just necessarily technology based, you know, but that human interaction becomes far more important, particularly as people work remotely and from home. Um, and we immediately noticed, you know, shifts in things like our, our time spent on the phone with customers increased, not because of process efficiency or technical issues, but because the, the value that they placed on that human connection really shifted as, as COVID kind of kicked into gear. Um, one of the big changes has been a, a space where we're supporting, you know, a consistent planned change um, and now we're moving to rapid change with very evolving and reactive decisions and moving from standardised environments to unique environments. And the impact on our team has been quite significant. Um, we're expecting, you know, our support staff to really be rapidly responding to different things. We might have different processes changing repeatedly throughout the day. Um, we have all sorts of new services coming on board. And, and the rate of change for our support teams, also going through all the complexities of COVID and working from home, you know, it's put a lot of strain and stress and expectation on them, particularly because a lot of our customers are potentially you know, quite um, upset from a context of COVID and family and additional stresses and pressures. And that then sort of reflects out into our support teams. And we, we really have to put them front and centre and make sure you know, we're supporting and making them a, a big priority um, for our employees. And how did you find that transition, Haley? I mean, you guys have been Genesis customers using Genesis Cloud for a long time. When you had to scatter your workforce and tell them all to go and work from their houses. How, how, did, how did you find that process? Do you know what? It was absolutely effortless. We, we made the call um, on a business day that, you know, everyone take your laptop home, you're not coming back to work tomorrow. And there were actually no issues at all across all the contact centres in the university um, with everyone transitioning to work. So that was amazing. No issues, no effort, no change, no plans, nothing. It was just 
everybody's connecting into Genesis Cloud tomorrow from home. So that, I've got to say, made a massive difference to everyone. Um, but we certainly had some opportunities to just make things a little bit better as well. Uh, just just for the record, I did not pay Haley to say definitely <laughs> that was. So thank you for that, that uh, endorsement. That's very good. Um, so you've, you've, you've put all these employees working from home now. How has that been from an engagement perspective and, you know, from productivity and trying to keep, obviously, you've got a responsibility from a business perspective to keep productivity going because you've got to support your students and the customers. But then, you know, there's also this responsibility from an employee engagement perspective as well. So how has that gone for, from your side? Yeah, really good. Um, Jess, are you able to change the slide for me? I, I think I have the power. Oh, you've got it, Andy. Oh, sorry. Does that work? So, yeah, yeah, it does. That's so, good. look, one of the, the really great things that um, we, we did very early on is um, our staff didn't have the capability to have everything in that, that one agent interface. Uh, so we had all our voice um, within Pure Cloud, but we didn't have our online tickets through they were through service now. Um, one of the challenges, uh, again, that, that employee engagement is a holistic view of how your staff do their job from the minute they log in to the minute they log out. You know, having one interface is quite important. Having one location that prioritises all their workflow is really critical. And we made that decision early on that we really needed to make sure that all the online tickets that they would normally look into our service management system needed to be prioritised using the business rules um, and priority and service level agreements that we made and really just made the employees or our support staff not have to worry about looking in multiple different systems, not having to worry about, you know, the thresholds with when voice didn't need to be answered and online tickets needed to be picked up instead. So we really used WEM um, workforce management and the integration with Pure Cloud and ServiceNow so that we made all those business decisions in the background and the staff just had to worry about the thing in front of them that was, was dropping in order. Yeah, it makes life a little bit easier when they've probably got kids running around their feet and other things happening in the background as well <laughs> that they've got to try and deal with, right, that we've all had to manage. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Look, we talked, we talked at the beginning and obviously the title of this is about employee engagement, but also about, um, we've talked a little bit about gamification and things. Can you just, can you expand a little bit on how gamification um, has probably helped you in this space and, and what kind of steps you went through to put that in place? Yeah, absolutely. Do you mind just flicking to the next slide for me, Andy? So I don't know how many people have actually seen uh, gamification before. Uh, this has been quite critical to, to keep our team engaged, particularly because they're so remote. I mean, one of the key things that you, you lose when staff work from home is that, that line of sight, you know, that ability to, to see when they've had a really difficult conversation, you know, to identify that maybe someone's looking a little bit stressed. Um, and, and we really see, I guess, the traditional notion of, of some of your um, workforce management things are potentially a little bit punitive. Um, that shifts in the, this new world order. It, it's really how we see a flag that someone who's working remotely might need a little bit of help, might need some support. Um, and we certainly focused on making it making it fun, making it engaging, and a little bit of healthy competition. But also, like we've really focused on not just one or two KPIs, but collectively a combination of KPIs um, to the customer, and really highlight the different strengths across the board with our staff. Um, collectively you know we've got all different strengths and this really puts it front and centre so we've really seen a lot of people in our team who might um, proactively engage someone who's ranked number one at a particular KPI to have a conversation about how they might um, increase or improve their KPI in line with that so we start to see some really great ownership um, our leadership team actually doesn't have to monitor any of this sort of um, KPIs in that sense. The team really own it. They love it. 
it's really their tool, not our tool. Um, certainly behind the scenes, we use it for a lot of things, um, but but they actually own it in, in a sense. Um, and that's, that's been part of the delivery. It was really me saying, you know what, you guys work really hard. Um, this is recognition of your hard work and we want to give you something that, that you feel that you own um, and keeps you engaged and happy. Yeah, look, I think, uh, I think it's probably one of the, it's probably one of the first tools from a, an engagement perspective that's about engaging the employees first. You know, a lot of a lot of technology in a contact centre, it's it's monitoring, it's measuring, it's analysing, and it's to improve the operational effectiveness of the organisation. And, and obviously, this this uh, does that as well. But actually, the primary thing is to engage your teams and make them feel make them feel part of the culture of an organisation, and and let them at the moment connect with their colleagues better. Than just being stuck at home, um, or be some being in the office and some being at home, and all the different kind of permutations of that. So, I think that really helps, and and the bringing together, I suppose, of all of that data and that information into just one place makes your life a little bit easier as to what KPIs are important and what KPIs aren't. You know, and it's not always about maybe the rock hard KPI you have to have this handle time. You know, it can be much more flexible than that and much more easy than that. So, I think. I think that's uh, I think that's probably a key part of it. Uh, historically, people's view of gamification was, oh, it's an online, it's an online game thing, and it's all about competition. It's not necessarily about that at all. You know, it, it can be that if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be, which I think is important. Um, so, uh, sorry, Hilly, you were going to say something. Uh, look, definitely just echoing that basically and, and we see a lot of our team like you you might see the picture in the middle there it's two two people who've challenged each other and that's something that the team kind of own and you know they being remote they might not have that camaraderie that you see when they sit side by side you know so they are effectively poking each other in gamification to go I can take more calls than you today or whatever that <laughs> metric might be. Yeah. Um, to keep that kind of human connection to what they're doing and, and the team spirit really continuing despite their distribution. Yeah, that's great. So I'm, I'm conscious we're coming to the end of our little session. Do you have anything as a, a kind of final wrap up, if you like, or any advice that you give to the people listening into this group around managing employee engagement or motivation or keeping morale high? Is there kind of a, from what you've gone through, is there a summary that you could wrap up with before we finish? Yeah, maybe if you could just flick to the next slide, Andy. Look, I, I would say that this is quite critical in being part of your overall, you know, training and coaching and how you go about um, your whole employee experience. And, and we've used, I guess, a, the ecosystem of different capabilities inside the tool to really, um, you know, look at things like our quality ticket management, um, understand skills gaps, coaching opportunities, and we embed these capabilities in our whole coaching and um, training and professional development process. Um, what you've got here is, you know, we've actually gone through and used our quality management as well as running a Mentimeter to analyse the gap within something anecdotally we could see. Um, we then used WFM to plan training. So we decided that we needed specific certification training for our team. Across 20 people, we located six um, hours of training per person that we could do without impacting our service quality using um, WFM. Uh, we then delivered training and then we used um, the, the gamification, the quiz capability to validate people's understanding. And it, this is something that's really so much more important whilst people are working from home. You can kind of passively give people training, but it's very difficult to understand, you know, active listening, applied learning and knowledge. Uh, and this is something that we've embedded into all our new processes, all the new services that we take on board. Um, once people have done that training, we then do quizzes to verify those levels of skill and then basically give people that skill or, or that functionality once they've, they've done that. And this is really part of a whole strategy around employee engagement, which is becoming just as important as your, you know, UCX strategy. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Hayley, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for listening to us today. We've... Um, we hopefully haven't bombarded you with too much information, but yeah, and also thank you to Fiona and Jess for letting us uh, letting us talk to you and talk a little bit about uh, employee engagement and gamification. Um, Fiona, back to you. 
Thanks, Andy. And we wouldn't have it any other way than to hear from Hayley and Andy. And, and congratulations, Hayley, on managing to get through uh, in Victoria. You, you deserve a, a massive round of applause. <laughs> uh, not only are you in the education sector, but you're also uh, in Melbourne. So uh, a hearty congratulations, and I hope you're enjoying um, some newfound freedoms or getting back to what you used to do.